Okay, guys. Um, I posted these answers yesterday. I told you guys to email me if you found any mistakes or anything like that. I have not heard. So I'm assuming everything is good to go. <laughs> but your test is going to have 10 questions. Very, very straightforward. Just like I talked to you guys about in class. One question will be like this. Given the three equations with three variables, <clears throat> you're going to be asked to solve using matrices. That's our elementary row operations. So just make sure that you're going through your methodical, your step-by-step, -step, and you take your time. One thing I do want to show you is if you get to a step like this, you see how this blue row right here is, everything's divisible by two. If you want to go ahead to make your numbers smaller, if you can divide everything in the <clears throat> row by the same number that's fine it's just taking out the gcf like you can do that here as well you can divide everything by negative four whatever if you want to you can if you don't want to you don't have to if you mommy, don't see mommy, it mommy. sorry valentina ran in to tell me something but yes if you want to um simplify that way you can if not don't worry about it you'll be able to do it at the very end but no guys when you get into your matrix C that we have our ones on the diagonal and zeros underneath. That is your system of equations. Once you put it into this form, you then use your back substitution and go ahead and get your ordered pair. On the test, there are no fractions. I mean, everything nice, pretty whole numbers. So just make sure that when you get to the end, <clears throat> you have your ordered triple, I should say, not ordered pair. This is your X value. First is your X, the second is your Y, the third is your Z, and then go ahead and plug it in to the originals and make sure it satisfies and makes all three equations true. So there'll be one of those. There's gonna be one where you have to set up the partial fraction decomposition and not solve it. So the first thing you need to do is factor the denominator, and then however many pieces the denominator has, that's how many fractions you have. So you see in this one, there's three different pieces, so we have our three different fractions. And just use your capital letters A, B, and C to set that up. Then you'll have a fr partial fraction decomposition where you do have to solve. So remember, remember how to factor when A is not one, all that good stuff. But in this case, like in number six, we factor, we get two different denominators. So I have my two different fractions. And then you solve each one of these to find out what you're going to plug in for X. And then remember, when you plug in your values, every single time one of the variable should cancel out or two if there's more than one <clears throat> leaving you with just being able to solve for one specific variable a b or c um, okay moving along then we have our super basic ones um i gave you some more row elementary practice here this is a good one to look at um don't worry about this one because this one has a fraction inside of it and i didn't do that to you guys on your test so just worry about number 14 i'll show you but remember if you're asked to write the dimensions of the matrix it's row by column so it's left and right by up and down how many rows how many left to right numbers you have <clears throat> and then column is how many up and downs you have um, if you are asked to given a set of equations write the augmented matrix understand that that means augmented matrix augmented means coefficients and the answers when you write it if you want to separate the answers and the coefficients by a solid line that's fine if you want to use like those two little dots in between that's fine as well if there is nothing represented like right here there's no z value that's why we put a zero there so then if they asked you to write <clears throat> the system given the augmented matrix remember the first column is your x your y your z if there is a fourth column without the answers that would be w and then here's are your answers so what i mean by that is like say you had something like this like seven four zero one then your answer over here negative three this would be seven x plus 4y plus 0z if you want to write it and then plus 1w whatever the fourth variable is <clears throat> they always use w so this would start with x y z w and then your answer just if you see that's good to know um okay then if we're going to write the equation in standard form by completing the square well remember this is your standard form it's x y z and this is your radius squared 
So what you want to do is get all the X's together, <clears throat> all the Y's together, all the Z's together. You take the B term, divide by 2. Whatever is right here goes into this equation. Then you square it, add it to both sides. Take your B term. In this case, it's 6. 6 divided by 2 is positive 3, so that goes right here. Square it, add to both sides. Negative 12. Then, guys, once you get in <coughs> standard form, when you pull it out, the signs flip. So inside it's negative here, this becomes positive. Inside it's positive, it becomes negative. Inside it's negative, it becomes positive. And then remember, this is the square root of that number. Um, okay, next, next thing we're going to look at. Um, how to find component form. Remember, it's terminal minus initial. That'll give you your vector. <clears throat> and then once you get your vector to find the magnitude, you just square each piece, add it together, take the square root. Um, if something is orthogonal, the dot product is equal to zero. Remember, if you have a vector that looks like this, I would rewrite it and say that u is 5 fourths, comma, negative 1 half, comma, 2, and v would be 4, 14, and 1. Remember, if no letter is represented, then it is a <coughs> 0. Um, so if they, the dot product is 0, then it's orthogonal. If it's not, it's no. Again, here's a, a dot product. I would rewrite your vectors into this form so you can see a little better. And then you'll have a question that just tells you here's three vectors or two vectors. Go ahead and perform the operation. So you're going to multiply 7 into u. You're going to multiply negative one-fifth into w, and then you're going to add them together. So first with first with first, all that, I mean, sorry, wrong line. After you do all the multiplication, first goes with first goes with first, second goes with second, whoops, second goes with second, and then <clears throat> third goes with third goes with third. And that gives you each piece of your vector. So that's it, guys. Very, very, very straightforward. Um, those of you who are not going to take the test tomorrow because you're on transfig or something like that, the makeup days will be Tuesday morning and afternoon or Thursday morning and afternoon. And that is it. Got to get it done this week. All right. I will see you all tomorrow.